Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be going over the Marauders United Allies Hotfix number two, which the devs released today, May 11th. I'm super excited to go over these notes. I've been enjoying this United Allies update way more than the Red Baron update. If you guys have been enjoying this update too, comment down below what's your favorite addition to the game. Mine is the colony ship. I really do love the new POI and the fact that it's the only thing that spawns means the PvP and the loot is usually great in that area. And the Marines that spawn in there can be tough to take out if you're not prepared, but we'll go over what's changed with this update. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We cover a lot of extraction shooter games. I play a lot of Escape from Tarkov and Marauders. And I stream right here on YouTube Mondays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and a random day of the week, depending on how my schedule is looking. There are two known issues that the devs have written in these patch notes, one of them being that the flare gun does no damage to other players, but it still damages NPCs. Uh, that doesn't really bother me. I don't use the flare gun that much. I typically just leave them behind and sell all the flares that I find. Also, hot swapping your weapons, armors, and helmets have been disabled just because there was a little bug with them and they're still working on it. What I mean by hot swap is when you kill an enemy or a player and you want to take their gun and you just want to drag it over your slot that's full, normally it would just exchange them, but they disabled that now. So you actually have to discard or unequip the weapon you have to take the enemy or the AI's weapon that you want to take with you. Now we're going over the balances that the devs included in this hot fix. A lot of them happen to do with the weapon spread on certain guns when you're shooting them from the hip. Just to start off, all of the SMG's weapon firing spread when shooting from the hip has been decreased by 15%. That's big plus right there because the SMG's kind of felt like they lacked in that hip firing in close quarters combat. Also, all of the SMG's have a max firing spread that does not increase over time and per shot. As the rifles, their weapon spread has been reduced by 20%, but when you're shooting a rifle from the hip, the weapon spread is going to be increasing over time as you're shooting it per shot. The PPSH, which has been infamous all around in PvP when you put the drum mag on there with the 56 round drum, has been nerfed from 24 damage to 23 damage. It may not seem like a great number, but when bullets are flying at you, it's going to hurt and it'll take you out quicker than you think. A lot of people were going around using the Mosin because it was a strong sidearm that you could equip. It went from 44 damage now down to 42 damage, which means it's in line with the 300 Magnum Johnson rifle. The flamethrower, which a lot of us know from the closed alpha days, was really overpowered. For some reason, this swiped. It didn't feel as powerful as it was before it was nerfed, and now they happen to buff it just a little bit more for this hotfix. The damage of the flamethrower and the firing has been increased by 30%. 30% that's a lot of damage especially with the range usually when I see that flame coming at me I run away from it because I'm scared of fire in real life and in game uh, but we'll have to see because there is a task in the zero to hero that requires you to get 15 kills with the flamethrower which I'm currently stuck on I can't find a flamethrower I've been selling all of them now some more nerfs when it comes to the AIs and their loadouts you guys know in the colony ships it's full of UA marines that'll sometimes have 45s on them they'll have the m16 which carries the 556 on them which the m16 is a pretty good weapon unfortunately their spawn has been nerfed by 50 percent so that means if you see 10 united allies marine there's a chance for only five of them to have the m16 as it compared to before this hot fix you were finding m16 lying around you could walk out with 120 or more rounds of 556 which was definitely helpful when you had a stash full of stoner 63s and no ammo to use it there has been changes included to some of the loot spawns and loot pools in the game. One of them being that the rare loot pools are now reduced by 40%. 40% is a lot. That means that now when you're going around just opening boxes and opening stashes, there's a less chance of you finding something valuable that will sell for money, for example, war bonds or a high tier armor or a high tier weapon. The vault loot pool has been increased from one item to two items, which I honestly believe it's great because now it gives more of incentive for people to go in and try to crack open the vaults and start searching inside. Now, as we know, as most extraction games like Tarkov, The Cycle, and now Marauders, there's always hidden caches and stashes laying around that you can loot, and normally they would spawn pretty good loot. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not worth it. But in this update, they reduced the amount of items that spawn in those stashes. It went down from three different items from spawning in there to only two. So look out for those stashes. You're not going to get three more items out of it, but you still can find rare loot inside of them. VoIP has been turned on for all new users joining Marauders. Now, the only difference is that it won't be on for you to talk. You'll still have to key bind the button to be able to push the talk or open mic, which I don't recommend, but it's going to be defaulted on for everyone to hear. So basically, you won't have that problem where you're trying to VoIP out to someone friendly or you're trying to talk trash to someone and they're not responding because all in all, they never turn on the VoIP. Now we get to trash talk or make friends. And even if they don't have push the talk on, they can't speak to us. There was one bug going on with the amount of prestige tokens that you get when you would level up in prestige. The first prestige has always been three tokens. The second one was supposed to be two and so on. And there was a problem where you were actually getting more for the second prestige and not getting any prestige tokens for the third. But it seems that they were able to fix that problem. So when you prestige for the first time in game, which I believe is level 40, you'll get three prestige tokens. Any prestige after that will automatically give you two tokens. Those tokens are used to upgrade your stash, unlock new cosmetics, and have more inventory in your hangar to have more ships on standby. 
now that we're now that we're done talking about the balances, we can go over some other updates that they had for the UI and the animation. The Sherman rig, they centered the pockets on looks like they're on the UI. The Sherman rig, which the pockets were kind of off center, they fixed that, so now it looks prettier to look at. Also, crew searching and joining has been more sturdy. I don't know if you guys were aware of this, but before you would find your friend's crew, you would type in the password, you wouldn't join it at all, or you would type in the crew name exactly to the T, and it just would not pop up in the menu. We've been just using player invites. Whoever the crew leader is will add everyone on Steam and invite everyone in, which has never given us a problem to that. There's a new pop-up on screen that pops up when you lose connection or disconnect from the server, which is pretty cool, but I don't see it useful if you can't reconnect to the same server. Another pop-up after unlocking a Twitch drop that you had already unlocked before. I don't see how that's an issue. Honestly, I've never dealt with that. Like all of my Twitch drops that I got, I was able to unlock and use them. I had no issue overall. Uh, one of the biggest things I noticed on this list is right here where it stops you from collecting a ship from your crafting if your ship hangar is already full. I can see some people were having that issue where they would collect the ship and then automatically they have to decide what ship they're going to sell. So now if your hangar has all three slots full or more, if you prestige and unlock more, more parking spots, uh, now you're not able to collect a crafted ship until you clear up space in the hangar, which is pretty good because sometimes you collect the ship by mistake and you have three good ships that you don't want to sell either of them. And unfortunately, you have to make the tough decision of which one's going to be gone. A couple animation updates that they did when you're walking with a gun or without a gun so your feet look like they're making better contact, which is pretty good for everyone who likes to see pretty stuff and nice animations. A uh, small positive sound when you successfully join a crew, which is definitely needed because sometimes you invite a friend and you're not in the main tab, you're in your gear, you're in the trader, and you won't even have an idea that they joined the crew unless you actually go back or they say something. You know, some people join in, they be very quiet, they're like, I don't want to say nothing, it sounded like you were busy. <laughs> Couple optimizations that they also did it for players, AIs, unique actions, lootables, and contract interaction areas, which I believe are the ones where you have to hold down like 12 seconds when you're repairing the ship frigate fuel or the spaceport admin files. You know, you got to hold down that F button for X amount of seconds, which can be very anxiety inducing when you don't know if someone's around or you start hearing footsteps closing in on you. You're just panicking. Sometimes you have to let go and turn around and get into a firefight. They also fixed a bunch of exploits that were going on. If you guys were aware, sometimes you would get off the periscopes and your arms would just be wobbling around on your screen like crazy. That's said to be fixed. Red Baron now strikes back and attacks players' ships and their pods. For some reason, in the beginning of this update, he wasn't shooting at anyone. And a lot of people thought that was changes, but now it looks like it might have been a bug. You know, he would just fly around, he'll look at you, and he wouldn't fire. Well, guess what? Now he's going to fire back, and he has good aim. So be careful when you're potting around him. Make sure he's not paying attention to you, and you're able to breach in quick or get yourself to the extract fast, because his ship shoots fast, and it is pretty accurate. One of my favorite fixes I see here is you breach a location. Everything will be like super bright and the exposure is thrown off on the camera. Now they have a fixed exposure so you won't be dealing with that super bright pop-up when you breach a ship. You know, you won't have to wait for the game to like, I don't know if it's like render or something where the right exposure comes in and everything looks good. Because sometimes I'll be looking, I'm like, man, this is too bright. I'd have to wait a couple seconds for it to go back down to its normal exposure. All right, everyone. Well, that covers almost everything in the United Allies hotfix number two that the devs released today. I'm excited to jump on in and check out the new weapon spreads on the SMGs and the assault rifles. I've been having a blast using the stoner rifle, which was included in this update. I can't wait to see what the future brings for us from Marauders. This update is very great, and I've been enjoying it so much. I'm about to prestige my first time, but we'll be leaving it off here. Once again, if you guys are new here, you made it this far into the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Helps us out. We're still on our road to get 1,000 subscribers. If you're on YouTube and you catch me live, don't be afraid to jump on in and say what's up. We usually have having a good time with some friends playing Marauders or Escape from Tarkov. We like extraction shooters. They build up the hype and those intense high risk, high rewards moment are all what I play for. All right, everyone. Peace out. Have a great time. See you next time.